nothing to say to you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Oh, what do you reckon, Brian? Do better than that, can't they? Yeah. Try it once again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. That is much better. Thank you very much, you're very welcome. Now, uh, I do have to do just the usual announcements, mobile phones, although thinking about last uh, night's show, an, an odd ringtone would have probably added something to it. I don't know. But, uh, if you silence your phones, and we've got fire exits pretty much everywhere. They've got clear signs there, so in the very up... Hello. <laughs> somebody striking a match when I said that. Wasn't it? So, yeah, serious note, we do have fire exits everywhere, so we do, in the very unlikely event, have to evacuate the building. Please wait, you may make your way through one of those. Right, now, I've done these shows for about, oh blimey, I, I hate to say, probably 30 years, and I have seen and met some absolutely fantastic acts, and this next act is not one of them. <laughs> it's John Brooker with some speed juggling. <laughs> the whole point of this is my hand speed. You mustn't let the middle of my brick drop. You must, definitely mustn't let it hit the floor. Uh -huh. Thank you. It must have dropped. Right. Well, now it's got John a little story for it. It's, it's a heartwarming story. I'll, I'll hand you back over to John. Yes, we start this evening with a heartwarming true story. The story of little Johnny Forsyth who lived in London. Because of his stupidity and clumsiness, his teacher was always yelling at him, You're driving me crazy, Johnny. One day Johnny's mother came to school to check on how he was doing. The teacher told her honestly that her son was simply a disaster, getting very low marks in all subjects and that she had never seen such a hopeless boy in her entire teaching career. The mother was so shocked at this feedback that she withdrew her son from school and moved out of London and relocated to Birmingham. 25 years later, the teacher was diagnosed with a life-threatening cardiac disease. All the doctors strongly advised her to have open heart surgery, but there was only one surgeon in Britain who could perform the operation. He was located at a hospital in Birmingham. Left with no other options, the head teacher decided, decided to have the operation which was successful. When she came round after surgery, she saw a handsome young doctor smiling down at her. She wanted to thank him, but she couldn't talk. Her face started to turn blue. She raised her hand, trying to tell him something, but within a few seconds she died. The doctor was shocked wondering what could possibly have gone wrong so suddenly. Then she turned around and saw Johnny Forsyth, now a janitor in the hospital. <laughs> he had unplugged his old teacher's life support equipment in order to connect his vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I can't believe this. Some of you actually thought Johnny Forsyth was a <laughs> I'll tell you what, for people like you, we've got just the entertainment. <laughs> Before I go, I'll just... I'll tell you my best joke. <laughs> there was this guy, he's so cross-eyed, he's in Newcastle trying to sign up with Essex Police. <laughs> You're going to have a rotten evening. <laughs> and we're going to start it with a visit to BBC for some news. <laughs> Good evening, here's the news at 10. A bread shortage in one Suffolk village has resulted in a woman throwing IOUs to the ducks. We've just heard that a juggernaut of onions has shed its load all over the M1. Motorists are advised to find a hard shoulder to cry. <laughs> George Trimble, Blackpool's longest serving deck chair attendant, was better tonight after collapsing at work today. It took five people 40 minutes to work up work out how to get him up again. <laughs> According to the Office of National Statistics, 62% of adults are having sex right now, and further 35% in kissing and cuddling. The rest are watching a variety show in the village school hall. 
<laughs> the two junkies who accidentally snorted curry powder instead of cocaine last week are still in hospital. One's in a coma, <laughs> and the other one's got a dodgy ticker. <laughs> To improve standards in service and hygiene, a West End hotel today <coughs> dismissed a waiter for having his thumb in the soup. They also dismissed a topless waitress for two similar offences. <laughs> a new diet of centipod and garlic has met with mixed reactions. Mary Murphy of Chatham told the BBC that she lost 12 pounds and all her friends. <laughs> The House of Commons was sealed off after a police chased an escaped lunatic through the front door during Prime Minister's question times. The spokesman of Scotland Yard said it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. <laughs> Latest on bullion robbery. At Wandsworth Police Station, a man who's as deaf as a post and doesn't speak English, with a terrible stutter, bad breath and squeaky shoes, is not helping the police with their inquiries one little bit. <laughs> A vicar has appeared in court for riding his bicycle down the wrong way of the M1 motorway. When the judge asked him how he had not been killed, he replied, God was with me. He was further charged for riding two on a bike. <laughs> the Prime Minister had a me held a meeting with the Cabinet today. He also spoke to a bookcase and argued with a chest of drawers. <laughs> there was a strange happening during a performance of Elgar's Sea Pictures at a concert hall in Bermuda tonight, when the man playing the triangle disappeared. <laughs> we had hoped to bring, have been bringing you Arthur the Human Chameleon, but this afternoon he crawled across a tartan rug and died of exhaustion. <laughs> and finally, we've heard from a very disappointed guest at the Charles Dickens Society's annual nudist weekend. He had great expectations, but it was a very bleak house and everybody laughed at his little story. <laughs> and that's it for tonight, and it's good night from me. And good night from him. <laughs>
I asked Jessica if she'd uh, sing the song for us tonight. And luckily, she said yes. <laughs> Song. Well done. Now the next um, item is set in a pub. Uh, a little story just to link that in. There's uh, Johnny came back from school and he'd been set some homework and his homework was to ask his father what an alcoholic was. A bit strange, but anyway he thought, well I'll do that. So he popped into his dad and he said, Dad, he said, what's an alcoholic? His dad said, oh that's easy. He said, look out the window. He said, you see those four cars over there? If an alcoholic was looking at them, there'll be eight. And Johnny said, but Dad, there's only two cars out there. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting it. This is good. Right, make sure your glasses are all fully charged. It does help it go a bit quicker. But we'll take you now. Join the rest of the company down at the Old Bull and Bush. <laughs> uh, is your Christmas cracker for you? Oh, no. It's only November. Look, Christmas jokes already. Go on then, what is it? What did the geezer get with stolen advent calendar? What? 25 days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have a Southampton. Southampton? Yeah, a large pool. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I just farted so quietly, nobody could hear. Bartender? Time for another beer. Uh, no, Frank, it's time you had a new battery for your hearing aid. <laughs> yeah, what you got down your neck? Battery leads. Is that alright? Yeah, as long as you don't start anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Any sauce? Well, I've got HP. Eight pm a month for the next five years. Awesome. <laughs> you look happy. What's your secret? 
60 fags a day, a case of Jack Daniels every week, and plenty of sausages and burgers. How old are you? 29. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen to him. Ah, Dr. Watson, the usual? Oh, please. Well, what's the word? Ah, all lawyers are pillocks. Oi! I object to that remark. Why? Are you a lawyer? No, I'm a pillock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right then. Uh, ah, hey, Frank. You know, Frank, I saw you out the other day with that uh, foxy looking blonde. Just taking your advice, Doc. Remember you said, uh, get a hot mama and be cheerful. Huh? No, 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 Frank. You see, I actually said, you've got a heart murmur. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, get your hearing aid fixed. Oh, Can you uh, lend me a fiver till payday? Well, when's payday? Um, no, you're the one who's working. <laughs> hey, you got any helicopter flavoured with crisps? Uh, no, just plain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have four bottles of wine. <laughs> what, do you want a box for this? <laughs> no, I hate violence. I'll pay by card. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick them up later. Yeah. <laughs> See you, Bob. Oh, are you off? Yep, I'm off to listen to a lecture on alcohol abuse and the effects it has on the human body. Really? Who's giving a lecture at this time of night? My wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Watson, got no homes to go to? I never. Hold up, Bob. Pull the clothes up. Pull all the pull it. Yeah, I want um, a case of Newcastle Brown, three cases of light ale, ten cases of lager, seven cases of Guinness, four cases of rosé wine, ten of red and eight of white, twelve bottles of whiskey, four of Abacar, six Jack Daniels and a dozen baby shams. I'll take a bag now so we can get stuck in and send the rest around in the lorry. Go on, there you go. Thank you. Bloody Christmas. If it wasn't for the kids, we wouldn't bother, would we? <laughs> <laughs>
like to drive in convoys, we're most gregarious. That big six-wheeler, scarlet painted London transport diesel engine, night seven horsepower on me bus. Earth has got anything to show more fair. Stick up all the fares If tickets cost a pound a piece Why should you make a fuss? It's worth it just to ride inside That 30 foot long by 10 foot wide Inside that monarch of the road Observer of the highway go That big six wheeler scarlet painted London transport diesel engine 97 horsepower 97 horsepower on the bus short players at Ashton Players, but that doesn't stop us putting on spectacular festive classics like the 12 Days of Christmas. <laughs> Six 
in the mirror and he's very pleased with what he said, sees. So he goes down the town to the uh, bank and he gets some money out. He says to the girl, um, just out of interest, how old do you think I am? She said, I'm in mid-thirties. He said, I'm not, you know, I'm 53. She said, you look amazing. So he goes down to the supermarket, buys some items, when he's finished, he says to the girl, just out of interest, how old do you think I am? She said, no, about 37, 36, 37. He said, I'm not, you know, I'm 53. She was amazed. So he went off down to the bus stop to go the bus home. <coughs> he's standing there and this little old lady came up to him. He said, uh, just out of interest, how old do you think I am? She said, I can tell you exactly how old you are. I have a special method. He said, what's that? He said, well, I put my hand down in front of the trousers and have a bit of a rummage around. <laughs> <laughs> so he looks up and down the high street. There's no one coming. He said, um, oh, go on, then. So she has a bit of a rummage around. goes on for a bit. But um, in the end, she says, you're 53. <laughs> he said, that's amazing. She said, not really, I was standing behind you in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here we are with you. you must be joking. <laughs> Last night, some York stuck a firework up my dog's backside. Rex's turn. Well, it didn't do him any good. <laughs> Have another Brazil nut. Oh, why don't you like Brazil nuts? Not once I've sucked the chocolate off them. Oh. <laughs> My girlfriend said she was going to leave me because I was obsessed with the monkey's pop group. Oh, I bet she was only joking. Well, I thought she was. And then I saw her face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to chop the end off one of your trouser legs and send it to the library. Oh, that'll be a turn up for the books. Oh. <laughs> Here, I'm worried sick. I've got a meadow, a tree, and a picnic basket all growing out the side of my face. Oh, don't worry, it's just a beauty spot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm in big trouble with the missus. It was her birthday yesterday, and she said when she gets home, she wants to find something in the drive that goes from 0 to 200 in five seconds. So, why are you in trouble? I bought some bathroom scales. <laughs> yeah, I just keep thinking, I'm this woman, I just keep wandering around delivering babies. Oh, that's nothing. You're just going through a midwife crisis. Oh. I'm going to buy a goldfish. Oh, do you want an aquarium? I don't care what star sign it is. No. <laughs> I'm really feeling down in the dumps. Tell me something, would you marry someone who's work shy, <clears throat> untidy, mean, foul-tempered, and doesn't know the meaning of the word faithful? 
Uh, no, I wouldn't. Neither will my fiance. <laughs> I've just taught my dog to beg. Oh, good trick. Yes, last night he came home with two pounds seventy. <laughs> I want a divorce. All my wife wants to do is make love. Well, most men would be quite pleased about that. They are. <laughs> <laughs> dresser in a strip club, 20 pounds a week. That's not much. Well, it's all I can afford. <laughs> I just got back from a pleasure trip. Oh, lovely. Where did you go? I took the mother to the airport. <laughs> My husband and I bought a waterbed, but now we've split up. Well, what happened? We kind of drifted apart. <laughs> oh. Here, you see that woman over there? She must be one of the ugliest women in the world. Hi, that's my wife. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you think I feel? <laughs> I'm leaving you. Do you think more of football than you do of me? Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's true. It's football, football, football. Oh, God, I can't believe this. After 13 seasons together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting so absent-minded. I forget to pull my zipper after I've been to the restroom. You realise it does get worse. How can it get worse? It's when you forget to pull it down when you go in the restroom. <laughs> Do you ever look at your husband's face while you're making love? Just the once. It was twisted with hatred and rage. Why? He was looking through the bedroom window. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've worked you out. You're what we call a groaning audience. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, very good. I think we've, we've, we've got your mark now. So there's plenty more to come where you can indulge in that sort of thing as well. But now, we have cats back again. Uh, as again said before, thank you very much for coming and joining us tonight. Uh, and this one's a really good little number. It's called Black and White Dancers.
friend of mine went to a party, a fancy dress party last week. He went dressed as Big Ben and he met a girl dressed as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So she said, if you've got the time, <laughs> I've got the information. <laughs> and I went to a party last week and I saw this guy sitting there and I went up to him and I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't you the man who invented Tipex? <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Here's the party pooper. Say, fabulous party, Adrian. Oh, thank you, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder if I might uh, use the bathroom. Yes, of course. It's, uh, it's up the stairs to the right, first on the left. Thank you. I say, it's a uh, funny time to be having a bath, isn't it? Uh, Wouldn't you prefer another drink? No, I'm not going to have a bath. Well, that's all that's in there. Just a bath. Just a bath? Yes. No other things in there? No. Hmm. Well, what if I said I need to see a man about a dog? Well, uh, old Richard's over there. He's a vet. No, not a real one. Look, I need to use the smallest room. Well, that would be Camilla's room. But she's asleep at the moment. There's a broom cupboard under the stairs, if you must. No, I hardly think that would be appropriate. Um, look, I, um, what if I said I need to inspect the plumbing? But you'll get filthy. No, you don't seem to understand. I need the Carsey, the bog. He needs the privy, the throne, the dunny. The dream catcher, the thunderbolt. <laughs> the big white phone. The House of Lords. The Superintendent's Office. The Brits of sh Show. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll be perfectly frank with you, Adrian. I need to do ones. Ones? Yes, one. <laughs> ones what? What do you mean, ones what? One's one's. I need to do number one. He wants to be excused. He wants to spend a penny. Oh, yes. Want to go to the lavatory. Oh. Yes. I need to go to the lavatory. Well, why didn't you say so? Julia. Rodney wants to go and sit on the donut in Granny's treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be pleased to know that's nearly the end of the first half. Hooray! But there is something even better than that. There's the raffle in the interval. But you've got to wait for you haven't won yet. You've got to wait for one more number, and this is a great little number if you know the words, sing along, but more importantly, if you know the moves, get up out of your seats and join in as members of the cast give you the time warp. Sit <laughs> <laughs> down, time is fleeting, madness takes its toll. Listen closely, and not for very much longer, cause I've got to keep control. Yeah. <laughs> 
the British Mixed Synchronised Swimming Team. <laughs> now, there's a, a, just a few things we have to do. Obviously, there was a bunch of amateurs there. We have to clear the pool of any detritus or anything that's been left behind. No, not that. I was talking about swimming hats and things like that, because we now have professionals taking to the pool. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the British Mixed Olympics Synchronised Swimming Team. <laughs> And it is the 18 year old star Kirby from Chester. Put your hands together. You got it all wrong, you got it back to front. I'm not 18, I'm 81. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not Kirby from Chester, I'm Chester from Kirby. <laughs> Where do you live now? 
Down by Tilbury Docks. Tilbury Docks? Yeah, I've got a ferry at the bottom of my garden. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh. My mistake. I should have told you to give it up. Pop star, grand pop star, more Listen, like. Listen, mate, I don't need any artificial aids. Oh, do you need glasses? I drink straight from the bottle. <laughs> How about your hearing? Up a six. I understand you've just got back from a show in New York. New York? New York? No, not New York. Near York. Uh, <laughs> near York. So, Huddersfield, um, Embalming Society, dinner and dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I all turned up in refrigerated bands. <laughs> Another question for you then. Do you play heavy metal? Listen, mate, if I can't pick it up, I don't play it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, why don't you tell us about some of the big stars that you've played with in the past? Oh, forget the big stars. Forget the Beatles, forget the Stones, forget... <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Berry. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I had voices like theirs, I could sing just like them. Yeah, uh, have you heard my last album? Uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> oh, I thought it was pretty good. Shows I can still cut the mustard, even if I do need uh, help to get the um, lid off the jar. Now tell me, you're a man obviously that performed in the 60s. Did you turn on, tune in and drop out? Well, I did then, but now <coughs> I won't. I'll turn in, tune out and drop off. How's your back? Well, but, yeah, I was going to say, my, my back goes out more than I do. <laughs> oh dear, so you, you must spend a lot of time at home in front of the box. Oh, the telly. Oh, I love the telly. Uh, I love thrillers. Yeah. They're making a new series about an airport hijack. Yeah, they've just shot the pilot. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Do you think, I'll tell you one other question, it's a serious one, this. Do you think there's too much sex on TV now? Not in my house. <laughs> we only tried it once, we fell off. <laughs> I've been my Mrs. Bad Books anyway. Last week she said, I'd love to be 10 again. So I went out and bought some sherbet, some ice cream, and popcorn. She was talking about her dress size. <laughs> she was obsessed about her weight. Last week she went out and bought a pair of gloves. She said to me, uh, does my thumb look big in this? <laughs> Listen, mate. When you get old, three things happen. First of all, you lose your memory. <laughs> Let me remind you, you were going to sing one of the tracks off of your latest album. Yeah, do you want me unplugged? Well, if only I could find the switch. <laughs> I can't do the number anyway. I haven't got any backing singers. Oh, I'm afraid they, I can't help there. They, they got on the wrong bus. Well, what, oh, who's that there? Look. Hello. Hello. Yeah, come on. Oh, it's, it's two of my backing singers. We're going to do uh, Teenager in Love. You join in. Why must I be a teenager in love? I'm sure most of you are old enough to know it. <laughs> Two of you, we need some more people. I tell you what, we need, really need someone out of the audience. Anyone um, you want? Um. <laughs> oh, yes. Come on. Come on up. Take it from the top and uh, you have a go, all right? Okay.
Thank you. 
Right, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, this next act, it's, it's, it's very unusual for me, living in that great metropolis that is Saffron Walden, uh, I don't often get out to these sort of country areas, and it's, it's really nice. I think I'm stuck there. If, if it wasn't for the archers, I wouldn't get any fresh air at all. Just... <laughs> but now we have an item here, and there is a Ashton, know the word Ashton, an Ashton celebrity. Hasn't made an appearance for, for many a year, what, has a, a great build-up, a great following in all of the pantos. I think you probably know if you're local who I'm talking about, as the next item is just called... The horse. Uh. <laughs> hey, hey, look. It's the horse. Oh, well, the horse. I've always wanted a horse. Oh, she is a lovely thing. She's a bit small, though. She's kneeling down. Well, perhaps she's got a sore throat. Sore throat? Yeah, you know. She's a uh, little horse. <laughs> perhaps she's for sale. No. No. One, the garden is definitely not big enough, and I'm not having a horse in my garden. <coughs> and two, there's no one here to sell her anyway. I see you admiring old Bess. <laughs> <laughs> she's lovely, but she's a bit small. She's got a sore throat. No, no, we've done that one. <laughs> she hmm. for sale? Well, I don't want to sell her, not really. Oh, go on, we're desperate. Give us a kiss then. We ain't that. Oh, just because I'm a common stable boy, suffering from haliotosis, alopecia and scurvy. Oh, I do like a man who plays hard to get. Actually, I'm not available, I'm taken. Who's the lucky woman? Fiona Appleyard, up the manor. Fiona Appleyard? Will you take away her quiffed hair and her stunning looks and her beautiful body and her charm and her wit and her wealth? What have you got? You. <laughs> Mother, please, we're talking about the horse. Well, if I was selling her, I'd want ten pound. Two. Eight. Four. Six. Five. Done. He has been. Well, you won't be needing these. Do you reckon, if I cut across this field, I can make it in time for the 4.30 train to London? You cut across that field, and Barney the bull sees you, you'll be in time for the four o'clock. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Why don't you just left their hat laying around here? Now, there's only two people around here that wear a hat like that. That's Old Cobbler and Bartholomew the Axe Grinder. Well, whose is it? I think this is Cobbler's. You what? I said, I think this is cobbler's. Yeah, so do I, if it was either this or if I was not a pony stage again. <laughs> anyway, I must be off. I've got to go up to the cemetery. Oh, who's died? They all have. <laughs> anyway, you want to get best, you have to go around that way. Okay, well, let's go and get the horse. <gasps> what a suck! I can't believe he fell for it. Weren't my horse anyway. <laughs> <laughs> cheapest suit in the shop, so they brought him a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> now, tonight they promised to sing like they've never sung before, in tune. <laughs> <laughs> Here they are, John and Gerald. Still do very well. 
I may be too old to climb a style. Climb a style? Yes, climb a style, but there's one thing at which I still excel. Although my hair is turning grey. Yes, it is rather grey. I still believe it when I say. Well, what do you say? It's never too late to have a fling. Autumn is just as nice as spring, and it's never too late to fall in love. It's never too late to wink an eye. I do it until the day I die, and it's never too late to fall in love. If they say I'm too old for you, then I should answer, why, sir? Drinks the wine that's new, the other one tastes much nicer. A gentleman never feels too weak to pat a pink carb or pinch a cheek, and it's never too late to fall in love. Says who? Says me. Says you. Says me. Says, Says both of us together. It's never too late to whisper words concerning the way on the bees and birds, and it's never too late to fall in love. A fiddle that's old is more in tune. And it's never too late to fall in Work a do, work a do, work a do. <laughs> An artist of today may keep their picture faster. But when it comes to skill, I say, Come beat an old master. <laughs> it's never too late to bill and coo. At any age, one and one makes two. And it's never too late to fall in. Never too late to fall in. Never too late to fall in love. Right, ladies and gentlemen, do we have any fans of Westerns? No. Yes, please. Yes. Oh. Well done. Well, you're in for a treat then, sir. I don't know about the rest of you. As the company take you west of Bed Springs Creek. On the Deadwood stage is rolling on over the plains. When the curtains flow and the driver is stopping the reins. So, we've got way, we've got way, we've got way.
No, it was a wife. She called me upstairs. So I went up, and there she was, stretched out on the bed. And she said, what did she say? <laughs> <laughs> she said, OK, big boy, go to town. So here I am. I'm stuck with it. <laughs> you better be nice to me, Missy. I've got a big spread just outside of town. <laughs> Looks like you're pouring it in with him. <laughs> I don't think this town's big enough for the boat of us. <laughs> don't kid yourself, Jim. It's hardly big enough for just you. <laughs> I want a room for the night. <laughs> what do you think I am, a red Indian? That'll be a dollar a night if you're going to make your own bed. It's fine by me. Okay, here's the hammer and nails. The wood's upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I request an audience. You what? I request an audience. Well, you're going to have that lot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to report a girl who's been stealing my cattle. What's her name? Jane Russell. She's stolen 500 so far. That's a load of boys. <laughs> Please, you've got to help me. I'm desperate, Sheriff. Pull me down. Okay. I'm desperate, Dan. <laughs> I'll be out to your place when I've had a drink to uh, calm myself down. Well, whatever happens, Sheriff. It's those Red Indians. <laughs> Can't trust them. One minute it's peace on, next minute it's peace off. <laughs> I went out to Nice Bend this morning, found old Peg Leg Pete, left hanging by the Comanches. <laughs> Those screams, that horrible sound, the worst sounds I've ever heard in my life. Oh, it's time for our next song, girls. I was wrong. <laughs>
I've seen your face on a wanted poster. Yeah. Back part, the gun swing. Yeah. Well, how many men have you killed? Five. <laughs> Five? That's not that many. Before breakfast this morning. <laughs> how many all together? Oh, hundreds, I guess, as I wander from town to town. to make some sort of significant contributions to Ashton Village life. And this year, uh, it's not these ones, but it's the ones behind, uh, Ashton Village School now have, for all of the productions and for the school, a new set of curtains. So give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> I know, I've been doing this for a couple of years, but I know they've done lots and lots, and I'm sure you'll be able to tell me all the things that they've done throughout the village. Um, I think there was some play equipment and things like that. So. It's us putting a silly little show on, but it's you coming out and supporting us, and as I say, putting your hands in your pocket. So thank you very much indeed. Right, the next item, well, it's, it's quite a strange one, this. It's, it's about the trials and tribulations of a young snake about town, and it's just simply called the Snake Pit. Piss. Piss. Will you stop making that noise? You know I don't like it. But, but I'm only hissing. Well, don't. I 
don't want you hissing in our pit. If you must hiss in a pit, go outside of this. But, but I like hissing in our pits. I don't like hissing outside. Anyway, it's raining. Listen, if you must hiss in a pit, go over to Mrs. Pit. And you hiss in that. Fine. Mrs. Potts? Mrs. Potts? Yeah, she's not home. I'll just I'll just pop into her pit and have a quick hiss. Hiss. Jerry Boa, what do you think you're doing? I was just having a quick hiss in your pit. Well, stop it right now. <laughs> Don't hiss in my pit. If you want to hiss in a pit, go home and hiss in your own pit. <laughs> Jerry, whatever is the matter? I went over to Mrs. Potts' pit to have a quick hiss in her pit, but she wasn't in her pit, so I went into her pit to have a quick hiss anyway. Then she came home and found me hissing in her pit, and she said, Jerry, if you must hiss in a pit, don't hiss in my pit. Go home and hiss in your own pit. <laughs> Does she think she is? I remember Mrs. Potts when she hadn't got a pit. <laughs> <laughs> There's been four new versions of the uh, of A Star Is Born, and the recent one, the fourth one, uh, produced a series of good songs, including one called Show Up which is going to be sung tonight <coughs> by Tracy and Jessica.
night, and don't say us learning our lines or some good jokes. What we're actually looking for is a bit of a bit of a sing along. You've just been sitting there without sort of you know really doing a lot of work. Do you think it's time for them to do something, John? Isn't it? I agree. I think, yeah. Have a sing song. What do you fancy doing? Um, you must know if I were a rich man. You know that one. Pretty straight. If I were a rich man. Give it a go. But, yeah. Well. Yeah, I've heard you've had some bad news though, lady. Yeah, I do. Yeah, just heard about it today. Have you heard of Dick Dodd? Well, Dick Dodd's dad's dog's dead. And I was so moved by it, I jotted down a little song in tribute. And we want you to join in on the chorus. Dick Dodd's dad's dog's dead. Let's just, let's just have a trial. No, forget it. Get the help on. I think you need some help. Come on, boys. Cinderella. Yeah. That went down very well. So this year we've decided to do Dick Whittington. <laughs>
End of scene one. <laughs> scene two, the streets of London. I'm sad. Why are you sad? Because I'm not going to the banquet with father to meet the king and the queen and their handsome son, Prince e Eric. I could cheer you up by telling you one of my riddles. Yes, dear. Why don't you listen to one of Jimmy's riddles? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Indeed, this girl deserves the best. I'll whisk her down to my palatial retreat in the sewers underneath the city. We'll eat ratatouille. Oh. Vegan recipe, of course. Here, one coach for the journey. No. No. Be gone, foul fiend, or Tom will be eating rat stew. Original recipe, of course. <laughs> All right. <laughs> End of scene three. Scene four, the streets of London. <laughs> Your turn again, Dick Whittington. Oh. <laughs> the bells are saying you are the new Lord Mayor of London, complete with mansion and as much money as you'll ever need. Curses. I am sad. Why? Because I'll probably never see Dick again. <laughs> End of scene four. <laughs> scene five, the streets of London. But I have arranged for you to be betrothed to Prince Eric. Well? Nonsense. I love you. I love you. Marry me. All right. <laughs> <coughs> I am happy. Wow. <laughs> I am still ugly. I'm still funny. We are married. <laughs> oh, Alice. Oh, Dick. Oh, oh God. Wow. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Here we go, and mercifully, 
ladies and gentlemen, it very nearly is the end. Thank you. Um, but before we go, and to give us a chance to change the scenery behind there, um, does anybody watch that Britain's Got Talent? Seen that on the telly there with all the judges and people come and do acts? Well, we've got something in Ashton we call Ashton's Got Apathy. <laughs> it's a similar sort of thing, but I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll, we'll give it a try tonight. I'm going to just try a little bit of magic. Uh, I do need a volunteer out of the audience. Oh, no, and there's a special way of choosing this, because I don't want to be accused of having a plant in the audience, in the way that John Brooker puts plants in the audience to laugh at his jokes. I will not be accused of that. <laughs> so I have a very random, a novel way of selecting this volunteer. They don't have to come up on stage, so don't worry about that. What I really need probably is a balloon. Anybody got it? Ah, thank you very much, a balloon. Right, this is going to take you back to your childhood days of past the puzzle. Young Mr. Brian over there is going to play the piano. I shall pass this balloon to you. If you don't want to be the volunteer, oh. bat that balloon back somewhere over there. We'll see how it goes. So I'll, I'll just pop it into there, and away we go. It's your go. If you want to pass that on. Jack, if it stays there, you'll be the one, sir. Get rid of it over there. There we are. Look at their little faces. It's the most fun they've had all night. It's crazy. Oh. Like a hot potato, nobody wants it. It's when that music stops. Whoever's last hand was over there, it's the gentleman there. Right. I am coming amongst you, don't be afraid. Well, in fact, I probably do be afraid. I'm going to get round there. Let's see, I've got to go the long way, I think. Hold on. Right, I'm afraid this next part, you'll have to tell me what you're trusted, young gentleman. Is he a trustworthy sort? No, they all cried. Right, never mind. We normally would do this bit with a big screen and a camera and you'd see what was going on with the cars, but we blew all the budget on the swimming pool for the synchronised swimming pool. Right, so you'll just have to trust this, uh, this young man here. So have a pack of cars, sir. Keep your finger at the ready. This is very important. That's a perfect finger. See the cars as they drop down? Yeah. You get a feeling for any of them? Yeah, right, ready. You've just got to pop your finger in and just stop the top of the Are you ready? You've got to be quicker than that. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> here we go. That one there. Right, take that one, have a little look, show it, don't show it to me, but show it to your colleagues there, because, pop it back in there, that's, that's your job done until I ask you to call that card out, okay? So, sorry, right, nice and loud, for the very first time, what was the card that you selected there? The Jack of Diamonds. It was the Jack of Diamonds, okay, now... That has been there all the way through the show. You might have noticed it, you might not, it doesn't really matter. But it's been there all the time. Just give me the card again. Jack of Diamonds. There is a card in here. And indeed it is the Jack of Diamonds. <laughs> Where's the golden buzzer now? It's all over. You're right. Right, ladies and gentlemen, just a couple of little things to say before we go to the last scene. It's just a little short medley with some songs you all know. I do have to say just a couple of thank yous, uh, the, the most important ones, uh, well thank all the people that helped with the raffle, of course, uh, our sound man down here is Dan, give him a round of applause. <laughs> and a gentleman we certainly couldn't have done this without, and that is Brian on the piano. <laughs> One other person I'll begrudgingly thank him with all the stick he's given me tonight. That's Mr. John Brooker from the yeah. yeah. So thank you. You've been a great audience. They've been a great audience, haven't they, Brian? I, have, yeah. I tell you what, you've been the best Saturday night audience we've had all week. Yeah. 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 Right, so we now go into the finale with a final medley.
Thank you. 